Fiddle, fiddle. Okay, there it goes. All right. <clears throat> so, Munchie Moms. You know, how many episodes ago was it that when I talked about this topic, I showed you a clip from the 1990s horror movie, The Sixth Sense. And you remember that scene where the little girl was having a funeral, a little girl who was terminally ill had died. And in the middle of the funeral, a videotape gets put into um, the television and they see hidden camera footage showing that mommy was actually putting dr like Drano or Lysol in this little girl's soup and that's what was making her sick. That's the sort of classic movie style Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And Munchausen's by proxy is when a caregiver almost, not exclusively, but almost always the mother, um, sickens the child or, or creates theater and artifice around the child to make it appear that the child is sick. And she does this for attention and sympathy because she wants to be recognized as, well, as a, as a martyr, as a, as a suffering mother. They, she wants you to see her big heart and everything that she goes through. But she wants the attention that comes from having an allegedly sick child. We have, like, I, I swear, the word trans is a, it's a magical word. It has magical power. It's an instant blinding spell. Because if you put the word in front of anything else, if you use trans as a modifier, instantly people are no longer able to detect any bad behavior, any character flaws, any problems or any psychological dysfunction in the person who is being described by the word trans. It goes right out of their mind. It's the sacred caste principle that I've talked about so many times. Um, and this is a thing that deranged mothers, they've got this going for them because not only is trans a magical blinding spell, but the, the concept of motherhood is itself in some ways a blinding spell because mothers are so foundationally important and they, and they really are. I said, this, uh, I said this earlier this week that mothering, full-time mothering and homemaking are quite possibly the two most important careers in the entire world. They are the foundation on which everything else rests and they are undervalued. They're undervalued in, in practice, but we humans know the primal connection between the mother and the child. It is horrifying to most people to contemplate that a mother could be wicked, abusive, that instead of feeling love for her child, that she feels envy or competitiveness or hatred, or that she actually takes pleasure in hurting her children. That is so horrifying to people that they, they usually refuse to believe it, even if it's been clearly demonstrated to them. And so you put these two things together, trans and motherhood, and you've got a perfect camouflage, a perfect invisibility cloak for mothers who have something like, or a, a case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. It's socially, it can't be seen. The abuse can't be seen. I saw this this week excerpted from, I think it's a Facebook group called Parents of Transgender Children. And um, let me read it to you. My son got his second blocker yesterday. Yay. It was going great until the doctor came in to perform the procedure. The doctor was amazing, by the way. And if you can't see this, it is strewn with exclamation points. This is the, the, the modern orthographic convention that says, I'm happy, happy, happy. My son freaked out after the numbing cream and after the numbing medicine was put in with the needle. He got so scared he refused to have the procedure. Luckily, Children's Hospital provided a child specialist to stay with him and with us during the whole procedure. Her job was to calm him and distract him. My God. Children's Hospital, what are you up to? Why do you have a professional whose job is to calm and distract a child who doesn't want to be injected with puberty blockers? What are you doing?
Back to the story. It took over an hour of negotiation before he let the doctor continue. I literally bribed him with money. It was the most stressful hour plus. I was so scared he wasn't going to go through with it, and I just kept thinking of the consequences if he didn't. The medicine cost $43,000 plus the cost of the insertion packet. The medicine only lasts a few days once prepared to insert. So, coming back to put him to sleep for the procedure would be unlikely. Not sure the insurance would approve it again. What consequences were you thinking of, Mommy? That it was really expensive and we shouldn't waste all that good, healthful medicine? That the doctors would be annoyed if you had to come back? Are you a little disappointed that general anesthesia wasn't a possibility? Because that's dramatic, isn't it? There's always a chance of death with general anesthesia. It would have added to the frisson, no? Final part of the story. <clears throat> I was so proud of him that he went through with it and cannot believe how brave he is. The whole way home, he was crying because he was releasing his stress. He kept saying how it's just not fair that he has to do this, and he's right, it's not. I really can't explain to my friends that don't have a trans child how stressful this was, so I thought I'd say it here. Being a parent of a trans child is not the same as just being a parent. It's all right here. By the way, if this wasn't clear to you, and it's easy to get mixed up with these things because these people don't speak in a language of reality, this is a girl. This is a girl. Probably a prepubescent girl. Not a son. Not her son. Not a boy. A girl. And she was crying the whole way home, not because she was releasing her stress, but because she was traumatized. What they're doing to this child is medical rape. It's medical rape. That's why she was crying. He kept saying how it's just not fair that he has to do this, and he's right, it's not. Oh, mummy, you're so empathetic. She doesn't have to do this. She's doing it because you're making her, bitch. You monster. Medea. But the real tell is that last portion. I'll read it to you again. I really can't explain to my friends that don't have a trans child how stressful this was, so I thought I'd say it here. Being a parent of a trans child is not the same as just being a parent. That's what it's all about. I'm special. I'm not just a parent. I'm the uber mother. I am bigger. My heart is bigger. My mind and my morals are more expansive. Look how far I'll go to make my little baby happy. That's how she wants you to perceive her. That is the core of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which in my view is usually a Baroque symptom of underlying borderline personality disorder, certainly a cluster B disorder. This is maladaptive. Well, it's more than maladaptive. It's, it's, it's actually physically abusive to the child, but it's a maladaptive way of getting her ego stroked because she doesn't have, she has a fractured ego. She doesn't have real ego strength. So the child has to step in and do it for her with her very body, with her fertility, with her psychological stability. For more conversation on the dark and disordered psychology that shapes today's cultural and political left, Subscribe to our weekly audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Google Podcasts, and virtually anywhere else you get your podcasts. Let's learn to recognize these dynamics and call them what they are. 
Subscribe to Disaffected to learn how to break the spell.